Thank you. Sorry, please, please. Try and calm yourselves down. <laughs> Decorum at all times. <laughs> See what I spend on you? <laughs> this is so nice, and it's a great privilege for you to be with me. <laughs> yes, I got that right. I'd like to take you to Paris again. See the garbage strike. <laughs> no, they had a garbage strike whilst we were there, and I thought you'd like to see it. <laughs> it's simply because uh, somebody came up to me the other day and said, Eyal, do you know what they call an Englishman who is chasing after a garbage truck? <laughs> You're right, the galloping gourmet. <laughs> I didn't know it that way at all. <laughs> so this is a restaurant called Andoué. Andoué. Which was a cheese restaurant which was founded in 1900 and then... And then in 1934, this Madame Andoué Bla, which means there. And she is shaking me by the hand. And there is my wife avec les tulipes. Les tulipes rouges. That means she's got two red lips. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go to the table once again, rather like an, an agno to the slaughterhouse. <sighs> Fancy being vice president of the United States and having a word like agno. You know, <laughs> leading him like an agno to the slaughter. <laughs> we are being separated by a brie. That is a brie. This is a place which has a tremendous amount of cheese. 100 different cheeses. And this is deep-fried camembert. Oh, I'm so pleased that intake of breath, it, it augurs well for the rest of the show. <laughs> Here I am, delicately toying with it, not knowing whether to shoot it or eat it. <laughs> there we are, and see the masonry behind, that's papier-mâché, genuine papier-mâché. There we are, what a game for the business. <laughs> little slurp of wine, there's some cheese. Now, have you ever thought of the difference in our languages? For example, here we are saying one, two, three, cheese. You see? Now you say it in French. One, two, three, fromage. <laughs> no, it doesn't look the same, does it, really? Now, you don't want to go like that. And That's the trouble with French politics. <laughs> Would you like to switch that little monitor off? Goodbye, Graham. <laughs> Go goodbye, Galloping Gourmet. Goodbye, Gar I'll have to kick it in in a moment. <laughs> I can't do my thing. Ah! Oh, I'm gone. Oh, isn't it awful? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> eh? No, don't shoot him. No, he's not allowed, George. No, no, you mustn't go on. He might, no, turn it off. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm here to tell you a funny story. This one comes all the way from Australia. <laughs> Tremendous waste of time. Um, it concerns an Englishman who is employed by the United States of America, which is a large continental land mass somewhere around in the northern hemisphere, <sighs> covered with a large cloud of smog. And anyway, he was employed by these chaps, and he was something to do with the moon. Now, he used to rush around because the Vice President Agnew, when he first went down to Australia and New Zealand, had tremendous success handing out pieces of moon rock. He walked out to a bloke in the street and says, Hello, son, I'm Vice President Agnew. Here's a piece of moon rock. And the guy was just so thrilled, you know. And he was always a photographer there to take a photograph of these moon rocks going out. Just great. Anyway, uh, so, here, 30 seconds left to tell this story? It's such a good story. How can I be squeezed down to 30 seconds? He comes through customs. And customs people are very concerned about drugs and pornography and things like that. In fact, they do it all the time. Anyway, uh, so that the, here, here, he comes in and they say, What you got in your bag, Mike? He says, Where's my bag? I've got some pieces of moon rock. He says, Ah, oh, come on, now open it up. There you go, sport. Yeah. Like this, opens it up, it's a piece of rock. He said, Ah, oh, you, you know, straight up, that's moon rock. He said, Yes, I told you it's moon rock. And when I said moon rock, it's moon rock. Rock, by rock. <laughs> moon rock. <laughs> Something queer here. Yeah? Here, Fred. Fred was the guinea pig for customs department. Said, Fred, here, smoke some of this moon rock. <laughs> so he goes, 
feel just the same as I did before I smoked it. Ah, oh, well, can't be any of that stuff. Here. <laughs> With a big lumbar puncher hypodermic syringe. <laughs> Into you nowhere. <laughs> How do you feel now, Fred? Ooh, he says. Just the same as I did, almost. He says, can't be any of that then. Must be something wrong with it. Definitely got to be something wrong with it. We'll impound it. So anyway, that's it. And the customs men will walk into the little shed after they'd impounded this piece of moon rock from this poor English bloke who worked for the United States of America. And, you know, little Fred, he's talking and he says, Here, can't understand the nerve of the fella. Coming in here with his zipper bag, full of moon rock, trying to make us believe it was moon rock. And with that, Fred turned into a piece of blue cheese. <laughs> Okay, well, I suggest we start off with a beer batter, which is necessary to make this thing rather delicately. You take some flour, you take some flat beer, and um, which looks like something you left at the doctor, doesn't it? Um, this, uh, and you, you break the, the... Isn't it funny? It doesn't matter. It only goes to show you that international politics have reached the sort of stage nowadays Notice how when I talk about international politics, I always use my best English accent because the English have been terribly good at politics internationally wise for so many years. It's unfortunate they fail now, but, um, oh, yes, well, anyway, <coughs> that's a good cue to stop talking about that. Um, and then what you have in there, in that yellow bowl, is, um, is two beaten eggs, uh, or partially beaten eggs. You grasp a French whisk in your right hand and you'll notice that this bowl is not round. Um, whip, always with a round egg in a square bowl. Uh, no, it, no I'm, I'm not kidding you. It works much better. And then you beat it that way. Always beat it 90 degrees to the bowl. You see now, 90 degrees to the bowl, unless you're actually watching me at the present moment. Incidentally, congratulations. Um, you wouldn't actually know what I was talking about, would you? Then you add two ounces of flat beer. It must be two ounces of flat beer, exactly, and then you take two ounces of flour. And you put all of that in together and just whisk it up, and then what you're left with is indescribably horrid. <laughs> no, it really is. I mean, it's like a batter. In fact, it's called a beer batter. And this is the stuff into which the camembert goes. Um, and we will show you that initially. I went to the Lido in Paris because I was told that all of the young ladies wore beautiful costumes. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They come on bare. better reason for going when you think about it. walk around with their hands in the air. They daren't walk around like that, you know. Well, I mean, they're telling us that Paris is full of uplift nowadays, you know, and it's not true. So this, anyway, there is the, that, that stuff which I'll come back to. Now, here I have this beer batter. After the beer batter, what does that read? Turn the pan... I can't turn it. How can I turn the pancake when I haven't even got to it yet? Extraordinary. Here's a pancake pan. Might as well get round to it now. And here is... Look in there, in that orange bowl. Oh, orange bowl, you are a melody. That should have slipped straight from the top because I had a marvellous line to go with that. I can walk down bright in front. Right, um, so this, you just simply pour that batter around in the bottom of there. Whenever you're going to make a pancake batter, which of course, as you know, is one whole egg and one yolk of egg, plus four ounces of flour, which is one cup, if it's sifted, all purpose, and nine fluid ounces of mleko, which is Polish for milk. <laughs> I'm now going to be given a small note from the front row, which says, Batters are in the fridge. <laughs> well, well, all right. Well, what's that? 
heavens. <laughs> Can't understand that. Free beer, man. Pinning. That's all right. Yes. So they are. I want this one. <laughs> so you take. Are you still on there? <laughs> Isn't this fun? I mean, instead of these normal plethora of, of, of culinary pundits, <laughs> you get an idiot like me who can cook. It's not often. Look at that. Instant smoke. <laughs> you then take you then take that batter, which looks odd, and you pour it into that pan. <laughs> it's nice to know that those same three people are still funny. <laughs> and you let it cook. By this time, by this time, the pancake should be done. <laughs> mm. There it is, and it's cooked the other side. It looks like a reverse shot of the moon. Beautiful. Have you ever been to Copenhagen? No. no. Pity. All right. Um, now, this pan that I have on the heat here, um, I've got to do something in that pan. <laughs> I'm going to make a sauce. It's on seven and it's rather dirty around the outside, which means that something's going to happen. <laughs> on second thoughts, I don't think I should. What do you think? Beautiful. Do you think so, Wesley? I like the smoke. Yeah, it's rather exotic, isn't it? And I'm afraid it's an awful waste of time. Um, so you pour it down the sink. Stuart! Please, please, Stuart. <laughs> he said he was going to get his own back one of these days. <laughs> now, that's, a, that, that's the general manager of our uh, television empire in which we make this program. And he sits upstairs with a measuring jug because um, he's rather stingy. And you just take an ounce of butter and pop it in there. Um, uh, and, um, and, and with a funnel and measures it down when I need water. <laughs> but he does stay on pretty late. And thank, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> OK, so we just shoot the... Uh... Now, that's doing well. How many more minutes have we got? Four? Plenty of time. No, my fear. Care is here. <laughs> so then you put the flour and butter together. And what you make out of that? Um, is a roux, and that is the basic foundation for an excellent sauce. At the same time that you do that, you just simply take a piece of onion, um, just about one ounce of onion, a bay leaf, another piece of onion, two parsley stalks. Fry those in the bottom, add to that exactly six fluid ounces of mleko, which as you know already, having watched this incredible program, <laughs> you know, that woman is right who writes for the daily news or whatever it is in New York. I'm a sloppy cook. <laughs> it's terribly good fun, isn't it, really, you know, just swapping our own kitchen informalities, continent to continent, using my wife's dish towels to clean up. Gosh, that handle's hot. And having done that, all that you do now, three minutes. Would you keep time at home as well? It's fascinating, you know, to see how the, the great empires of the world crash down upon me and how absolutely calm and cool and full of savoir fair I am. Um, and see that seven ounces of camembert go into not this batter because you put the batter away for two hours, right? And at the end of two hours, the bowl shrinks and goes orange. <laughs> See? <laughs> yes. And now you get. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Um, <laughs> I warned you about the trousers. So you take. You take. You take two ounces of bechamel. <laughs> Next time I'm going to wear my kilt. <laughs> Oh, I'm a trad Scot. Um, and you take all that mixture of the beer, 
Are you following me? Yes. Good heavens above. <laughs> of the beer batter. Right. At this stage, you're lost. <laughs> but I might as well show you what I was going to do. In here, when you've crashed up... Gosh, I do have a lot of fun with you. You've no idea. I really do. You know, sometimes you feel that you can communicate. And today, I can't. Uh, this is... <laughs> Ah, so you take a potato masher, and you do the potato masher, cozy, cozy. Mm. And you season that with one full teaspoonful of dry mustard. And you smash that all up together. This is really fascinating. What's the matter, darling? Are you all right? <laughs> it's all right. Only another five minutes, love, and you'll be able to. It's all right. So you take all that, and that goes into the fridge. Choom. Up. In. And this stuff comes out, you see. <laughs> now what you do is you get um, a couple, half a minute to go, couple of very thin pancakes that have been made before and are cool. You lay those on the countertop. You get a solid silver spoon and you put that cooled mixture on there <laughs> 10 seconds to go and fold it over using beaten egg wash and a brush to seal the whole of that package panaquette they call it don't get in a panaquette it'll be all right <laughs> and just seal it once fly <laughs> and it unrolls the other end. <laughs> That's right, just like that. And then you pop these into a deep fryer. You see, I'm not hurrying because I do want you to know everybody thinks that I just make mock of good food and I don't like doing that. So you pop these little panaquettes here. I know, you're getting so upset upstairs, aren't you? <laughs> I can hear them from here. Don't us a tea now! <laughs> I can hear you. Look at that, look, it's my collapsible basket. <laughs> um, I put it in the wrong way round. <laughs> and you drop... Well, anyway, I'll be in there to show you what it looks like, all cooked, in just a second. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> this is, this is, et maintenant c'est le 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 panique. C'est un fromage parfait. C'est le plus bel assiette en français je mange. Parce que je 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 suis un galopin gourmet. Et je désire le paniquer en préférence pour le garbage truck. <rires> et je rends ma, mon monnaise euh, dans le paniquer. Et le, le bouquet et l'aroma est très magnifique. Mon accent est pas comme les, euh, les personnes de Paris. Mais mon vocabulaire est. <rires> C'est est comme Al. Le paniquer est actually delicious, non? Would you like you to try it sometime that you can get hold of a copy of my cookbook? God bless you. Thank you for being with me. Nasty with me bags, doesn't it? Come on, Nick in. No, dive right through the middle. You can only eat panache in the middle. <sighs> Gosh, how have you been? <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Mm. Isn't it hot? Huh? It's dangerous. Your eyes are going red.